everyone so today I have a really fun video for you guys I'm gonna be sharing with you guys my top five favorite shopping secrets slash tips and I don't know why it's taken me so long to do this video this is what I live for breathe for do as a career and I implement all of these shopping you know sort of tips every single time I go shopping in either one of these scenarios I'm gonna help you save money I'm gonna help your wardrobe stay unique I'm gonna help you sort of sneak around the system and all that kind of good stuff so I hope you guys find this video interesting and helpful I have a lot more tips than this but these are my favorite so if you guys want to hear more than these then definitely let me know before we get started like usual if you happen to be new here welcome my name is Lisa everyone calls me L for short would love if you'd like to join my YouTube family if you want to don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the bell so you can be notified every time that I upload a video I also have an Instagram and a snapchat my Instagram I'm way more active on I post a lot of outfit of the days and fashion related posts so definitely check it out if you have not already all right so I'm just gonna go ahead and jump right in these are in no particular order but I'm gonna start off with how I shop sales just because I feel like it's appropriate now that the Nordstrom's anniversary sale is now open to everyone I did a little bit of damage the day that we had early access I the morning of I like woke up and went online and got the things that I really wanted and not everything has arrived yet so that is why I have not done a haul like everybody else here yet so definitely stay tuned for that so when it comes to shopping sale sales lure you in you really really want to get something because everything's you know a cheaper price so you're gonna save money now now technically if you weren't buying anything you would be saving even more money so when you shop sale whether it's the Nordstrom's anniversary sale which is fantastic because everything is brand new for that season which is great okay cool that's a perk but it doesn't matter if there is an item that you would not buy if it wasn't on sale then don't get it it is the number one thing that I always ask myself when I look at the item that's on sale I say is this something that I would buy if it wasn't on sale? And I would say maybe even 70 or 80% of the time, I say no, so I don't get it. The only time that I do buy things where I'm like, okay, I'm gonna get it because it's on sale is because I was lusting over something for a long time and I've been really wanting it and maybe I, and I couldn't afford it when it was regular price. So I'm not really talking about those times. I'm talking about when there's a sale and you have no idea what it is and you just wanna go in and because there's this big sign that says sale or online or whatever it is, they lure you in to spend money so always ask yourself is this something that you would actually get if it was regular price did you gravitate towards it before you actually knew the price discount so that is a really big huge money saving tip tip number two is how you get around the system when you buy sneakers now this is something that I do every single time that I buy a pair of trainers and it's always shopping in the kids section so if there's a classic pair of sneakers from Nike or Adidas just to use them as an example usually they always have it in the kids section and this is only if your foot size allows but I am a US women's eight and I always get a boys six and a half so I always save ten to fifteen dollars and if it's something that I'm doing online at least I'm saving shipping doesn't matter even if I'm saving five dollars I feel fantastic because I sort of duped the system and here's just a pair for example these are the Nike Theas and I actually got these from Nordstrom's in the kids section they're super super comfortable and I think they were maybe twenty five to thirty dollars less this is a one of the classic pairs that they had for a long long time and I've been wanting them they're my favorite gym shoes at the moment I wish I could replace them but I don't think that they have this exact pair anymore so always if your foot size allows check the kids section first before you buy your trainers another tip within that tip if there is a graphic or logo tee from a you know athletic brand like Nike or Adidas I'm using them as an example because they're like super trendy at the moment always check the kids section as well so in the big girls section I'm like either an extra large or a large and then in the boys section I'm usually a medium and I sort of just base the sizing off on how I would like that t-shirt to fit me just for an example of that I have this white adidas t-shirt that I got from the boys section on Amazon and I saved I think only like ten dollars but at the same time that's you know worth the worth the savings I did get this in a boys what's a boys extra large actually and so yeah that's right it was really really boxy on me so I ended up cutting the bottom and washing it a couple times and then it shrank to like the perfect size so 
This is a t-shirt that I ended up saving money on because I didn't get it from the adult section. Next tip that I have for you is when you're shopping online. This is going to save you so much time and a headache and not really exchanging things and returning things. And it's when you're shopping for something that maybe you're unfamiliar with the fit or the style on you. Maybe you're unfamiliar with the brand, but always check the size that the model is wearing. Now, I'm definitely not a model size on any website, that's for sure. But for example, if a model is wearing a small and it looks extremely tight on her, I'm going to want to size up. So that really helps me save time from not exchanging because usually I would be a medium and a top, but I would also kind of take into consideration maybe that model is an extra small in reality and they put her in a small and it's really tiny. So I would notice size up. Or maybe a model is wearing something that's supposed to be extremely oversized. Maybe I don't want it to look that oversized on me, so I'll size down or vice versa. If I want it to be bigger, I'll size up. You guys know what I'm talking about. So there are some websites that don't do this and if I am unfamiliar with that brand, then I I probably won't buy anything from them online just to save myself a headache and I'll buy something similar elsewhere where I do know the fit. And Nordstrom's is really bad about putting what size the model is wearing. Sometimes they have it, but if I'm really curious and I'm too lazy to either go into Nordstrom's to try it on or order it and return it, then I will call the customer service line and nine out of 10 times, they always tell me what size the model is wearing. They have more information on that piece on the model than they actually put on the website. So that's just an extra tip within the tip. And if another brand is a brand where you're able to call an 800 number or something like that, then do the same for them. You never know until you call. But for me, that has helped me save so much time and so many headaches when I'm shopping online. Next secret is probably not a secret at all because you guys, if you've been following me, you know I do this with pretty much everything that I buy and it's buying a dupe for the luxury item you are interested in. So this for me has saved me so much money and it also has made me feel really confident with some buys. So I highly recommend doing this all the time and only three things can happen from this. One, you end up falling in love with the dupe so much that you forget about the luxury item. Two, you end up finding out that style or that function of the bag or that color shoe or that color bag didn't work out for you and you're so glad you didn't end up spending the money. Or three, you end up using the dupe so, so much, you love it and you're just ready and super confident to actually pull the trigger and buy the item. So this has happened to me in a few situations. One of them you guys are really familiar with and that is with the Jeffrey Campbell at Full Mules. I am so in love with these and I'm really sad I didn't get a second pair. And in the case with these mules, I ended up falling in love with these so much that I, I sort of did not care about getting the Gucci Princetown mules. I just love these so much. First of all, the look of this is a lot edgier than the Gucci bit. The Gucci bit's very timeless and classic. So I'm really sad I didn't get another pair of these, but there's so many dupes out there of the Princetown mules. It's kind of hard to actually buy them because there's so many cute ones out there. I even got the studded Steve Madden ones that you guys have seen that I live in those too. Now, now, does it make me more comfortable if I were to ever buy the Gucci mules? Absolutely. I know I'd wear them to death because I wore these to death. So this was kind of a double thing. I really fell in love with these and I sort of forgot about them. But then if I did want to buy the Gucci ones, I'd be really comfortable too. Another scenario that you guys are really familiar with because it was my last video, I ended up buying this and really testing out if red color would work in my wardrobe. I ended up using this bag so much and really just holding it up to everything in my wardrobe and seeing that it works with everything that I felt super comfortable to finally pull the trigger and get this little baby. So because of that bag, I was really confident in making this purchase. And that has happened with several things. I've gotten, you know, mini backpacks and that's how I pulled the trigger on the Palm Springs backpack. It just is a really good peace of mind. And then there's been times where I've gotten things over the years that are dupes that made me realize I really do not want the luxury version. This didn't even work out for me. I don't like the color on me. The style of this did not look good. And I was just really, really glad that I did not spend the money. Last but not least is going to help make your wardrobe super unique and you're gonna save money and that is going thrifting going to the Salvation Army going to the Goodwill those places you definitely have to have patience and you have to have an imagination but I promise you it will help make your wardrobe look so much more unique you are not gonna look like the same person you know walking by you in the streets with the whatever the sweater that you got from the Nordstrom the anniversary sale that everyone got or from Forever 21 or Zara and I'm guilty of that too of course you know obviously, but when I have the time and really the patience to go into a thrift store, I end up scoring 
pretty much every single time. Another tip within this tip is always take into consideration alterations or maybe cutting something. I am infamous for cutting up my jeans and ripping up my jeans, distressing t-shirts, distressing sweaters, and I love doing that. It also makes that piece even more unique and more special. And one of my favorite pieces just to share with you guys from that I got from I think it was the Goodwill when I was maybe like 18 or 19 and it's this bright pink fuchsia really soft cotton it's almost like a bomber style jacket and I think it's from the 80s I mean it looks definitely from the 80s and it has these gold grommet holes every single time I wear this jacket I get stopped I get so many compliments and that happens majority with every single item that I have from the thrift store so I mean I think that just makes things so special and unique and maybe it takes a little bit of creativity and time yes but I think it's totally worth it and going back to the alterations let's say you find a really dope blazer and the sleeves are too long go spend the extra 20 or $30 to get the sleeves, you know, shortened or whatever it is. I'm just using that jacket as an example. It will be worth it and it'll still be less money than what it would be if you bought that really nice blazer in the store or something like that. It is so cool and I think is probably one of my favorite things when I see on people when they're dressed in vintage or when you could really tell something is just not from the, you know, the store right now. I think that's just what makes things so cool and fun. So that's probably my favorite one out of every single one of these and then also to the dupe thing that is that's just really important <laughs> all right so that is it those are my favorite five shopping secrets i hope you guys found this interesting and helpful if you did please give it a thumbs up and if you have any questions or if you want me to talk about more tips and shopping secrets then let me know in the comments below or message me whatever you would like and thank you so much for taking the time to watch this i will see you guys next time bye Mwah.